So this buried here is Anna Copeland, who was born A.D. 1796, was married first to William Perry, May 8, 1817, second married to William B. Copeland. So there's a tie-in with this grave that I just, it just kind of dawned on me. On the previous video I did, we visited the William Copeland Cemetery. She was married to William Copeland after her first husband died. She's buried here with William Perry, her first husband, whose grave is right there. But William Copeland, this may have been like his second wife because he's buried with a woman who died in 1836. You want to go visit um, William Perry's grave again? Copeland. William sure. Copeland's grave again. So that's Anna Perry's, Anna Copeland's second husband. Sure. May as well go pay our respects to the rest of the family. That's right. The, in, the, the, step, the step side of the family. That's right. Okay, so now we are across county. Just realized how, how bad is my hair? I just realized I didn't have my hat on. Eh, it's no different than it normally is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're back in what I called on the previous video the Trammell Cemetery. Well, I later come to realize that this is more than likely the proper name for this cemetery would be the William Copeland Cemetery. Uh, the Trammells are the latest burials here, the newest burials, but this cemetery was started by uh, William Copeland, and more than likely his home place was right around here. Uh, William Copeland's wife, his first wife, was buried here in 1836, and allegedly his brother may be buried here as well. His brother John allegedly died while visiting William Copeland and was buried, quote-unquote, in Brother Willie's garden, which is more than likely where his first wife is buried too. She died and was buried here in 1836, um, so she and his brother may have been buried here in uh, Willie's garden. So that's maybe how this place originally started out as William Copeland's garden. But we obviously just visited William Copeland's second wife with a different spelling of the last name, which is interesting, um, on her gravestone. But we're going to return and visit William Copeland again. And he is in there. That is his first wife. And it looks like, obviously, we just saw those 1830s and 40s burials, that those headstones look like they date back to the 1830s or 40s. This one's obviously was placed here later, I think, being the flat yeah. tablet, even though her, she died in 1836. She was probably in an unmarked grave. His has the sculptor's name on the bottom corner there. Oh, it see? sure does. Columbus, I Columbus? didn't see that. It is Columbus. Here, the gate works, so. Did I say, don't worry about bringing the light? Yeah, we did. We said... I need a light out here. I said, here. do you need this light? He said, no. no. I don't need it out here. Turns out I do. So this is the... Macaulay. Macaulay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's not one that I've seen very often. Yeah. Macaulay, Columbus, Georgia. Did hers have a Martha name on it? If it did, I didn't see it. No, it does not. Interesting. So this is William Copeland Sr. here, William B. Copeland. He was born October 1th. I think that is a four, but the four is straight <laughs> okay. up on this one. That's right, it is, okay. The four, the four got us again, October 4th, 1877. 1777. 1777, October 4th, 1777, and he died March the 9th, I believe, 1859. And then his first wife over there, Elizabeth, died in 1836 and we know that he remarried Ann Copeland. Why do you think the names are spelled different? I think it's just in how someone who ordered the uh, marker uh, probably placed the order that way. Do you uh, think 
Do you think that these stones are newer than the death dates, like 1859? And I, I, there's no way that one dates back to 1836. They look like they were probably purchased at the same time. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're almost identical. Uh, I don't know whether he would have signed both of them. Probably not. And that may be the reason that he only signed one, is that they both came to here at the same time. Uh, Are these flat stones like this common for the 1850s? Yes. Okay. Yes, they are. Uh, I'm still thinking about the spelling of that name. You know, you got to consider back then, things were ordered by mail, and someone wrote that monument company a letter and placed that order, sent them a bank draft probably for the amount, and uh, then it was, you know, scheduled date was set up, and there's no telling how far that monument or that headstone came from. It could have come from, uh, what was the year? 1856. 56. Or 53? It could have come from Columbus, but it also could have come from Macon uh, at that time. But even if it came from Columbus, it came a long way on a wagon. It had to be ordered uh, through the mail, and whoever wrote the letter and placed the order spelled Copeland the way they spoke it. Yeah. Phonetic phonetically. Right. So, While that stone is very nice, it's from the early 1850s, and it seems so much older in such a different world than these. You know what I mean? Yeah, it it, although it matches all of the others that are in her family cemetery, which are from the 30s and the 40s. That's, that's correct. Mr. Copeland has a lot of descendants. There were many, many Copelands descended from that man right there. And other other family and other family branches as well that married into other families, but uh, he was the matriarch of excuse me patriarch of the family. I think it's interesting too that they um, how the, his second wife is buried back in her family cemetery yeah. versus being buried with her second husband. You feel the weight of that gate. Oh yeah. That is heavy. So we are more than likely standing in what was described as Willie's garden, William Copeland's garden. And William Copeland was, he was very prosperous. Yeah, there's somebody buried right next to Mr. Copeland right here. That could be his brother. It could be. And see, there's a field stone there, but it might be the Mullins. Mm -hmm. Jesse Mullins. And this is Jesse's wife and Jesse's son over here. Jesse's son died in 1864. He was uh, a Confederate soldier, so he probably died in the war. Yeah. Who's in that plot over there? That's a Latham plot. Oh, okay. And I guess kind of what we're seeing is the ownership of the, uh, is the farm here where you have the Copelands, the Mullins, and then the Lathams. The Mullins still have lots of descendants, as well as the Lathams. That grave of wheel over there, who's that? That's the Trammels. That's the Trammels, okay. And these are... What? That's uh, Jesse Mullins' wife and son. Okay. Little red. That's what I keep looking at is all these little red mushrooms. They're everywhere. You see those? Mm hmm. If you want to try one of them, see if they're edible. You've I'm got a. There's a reason they're red. <laughs> you've got a 50 50 shot. <laughs> This is AO Trammel right here, um, not the AO Trammel that moved to White Sulphur Springs. Uh, he's buried up in Chipley, Georgia, but another AO Trammel. Yeah. And then most of these Trammel graves are from, you know, relatively modern times. There's 40s, 50s, and late 1800s and early 1900s. 
Who's that Unmarked grave is in that fence. Hmm. No name on the gate. No, I didn't look at the gate. I don't think it does have a gate. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't have a gate. Hmm. And then there's several unmarked graves out here um, scattered around like this big oak tree. There's a few unmarked graves. That's an old cedar right there. Just notice that. Um, I saw a few, maybe you see an indention there. And there's a few field stones out here. So what do you know about William Copeland? Well, the, <clears throat> there were three William Copelands. Three, there was William Copeland Sr., then William B. Copeland, and then William B. Copeland. Uh, I don't think that either of the other two went by Junior or the third. They just went by William B. Copeland. And the only way to differentiate between them is to know the dates of their d birth and death and to know specifically which one you're talking about in what time frame because they both, or they all three, at least the father and the son, I think came to this county when the son was grown. So the son and the grandson each had their own plantations. Uh, this obviously was his, but what's known as the, uh, the old Dunn house over uh, Mr. Charlie Dunn's old place on the corner of 116 and Oak Mountain Road, that was the William Copeland home. And William Copeland, who lived there in that house, was alive when the Civil War came on because he was hung in the front yard by his thumbs. Now, we've done other videos, as a matter of fact, and I mentioned that people were hung by their thumbs, and we've had some comments that said, no, that, was, that never happened, that's impossible. And one person even said, I've served in Iraq, and we saw every kind of torture under the sun, and there was no such, you can't hang somebody by the thumbs. Well, Mr. Copeland was hung by his thumbs, and Mr. Whitehead in Waverly Hall was also hung by his thumbs. That, that's a well-known fact around this area that that's what, uh, when Wilson's Raiders came through, that was one of their torturing methods. And they would wrap ropes around a person's thumbs and string them up. Now, how bad it dislocated their thumbs is beyond me. I don't even want to think about it, but, but it did happen. Right. And uh, if you Google uh, uh, torture by hanging by thumbs, uh, in the uh, south, southern part of the U.S. during the Civil War, uh, you will find that it occurred all over Georgia. I've read several articles. Yeah. It didn't just happen around here. It occurred all over the entire South, and uh, it was a it was a popular method of of just making someone disclose information, whether it be information about the army or or where they had their uh, valuables hidden. But anyway. William Copeland, who lived over there in that house, was hung by his thumbs in his front yard, as was Mr. Whitehead. But, but what I was originally going to say is the three big families of Harris County were the Copelands, the Whiteheads, and the William Walker family. Those were the big three. And if you go back into the records, uh, the old slave censuses, you'll see what I mean. Yeah. They were, they were quite wealthy landowners and, and had lots of property in this part of the state of Georgia. And that one over there, the top is gone out of it, but it's still standing. The cemetery has a kind of an eerie feel it really does. to it. And these are let's get out of vines, right? Mm-hmm. The vine looks almost as if it was planted over in there, but I guess not. Surely it wasn't planted there on purpose, but look how it grows out of there, up into that tree. I think it's interesting, the whole descriptor of Willie's garden here. Yeah. That That's where his brother was buried, which I'm sure his brother was probably buried in the cemetery. Yeah, beneath the periwinkle. Mm-hmm. There's lots of unmarked graves in the area. There's another stone there and one there. There's another stone. I've read before too about um, a different antebellum cemetery 
antebellum cemetery that was uh, described as being a, a garden that was supposed to be like an everlasting memorial space for the family. Yeah. And of course they all have generally wound up like this, just yeah. overgrown and in the woods. But Yeah, I think most of the old farm cemeteries like this one were uh, maintained much differently back then than what we can imagine today. Uh, there was something that I read once where the Victorian era uh, families considered the cemetery an extension of the home and they had elaborate uh, wrought iron chairs and seats and things you know for instance like in Linwood Cemetery in Columbus you know how some of those places were and, and you know they would go and spend uh, hours at the time at the cemetery going and cleaning and sitting around on Sunday afternoons. Uh, that was a big thing, especially in the country. And that evolved down into a tradition of everyone going to the cemetery after Sunday dinner. When I was a kid, you got up from the dinner table on Sunday, and if you felt like it, everybody would go up to the cemetery to visit the graves. And that was, that was a tradition that we followed as long as my grandmother was alive and able. In Tarleton, Georgia, we would eat lunch and they'd say, who wants to go to the cemetery? And we would, we would all load up and, and go up there and visit for a little while and then come back home and sit on the front porch for the rest of the day, yeah. visiting with neighbors. But it's something that people don't do anymore. What's that pile that gets that tree there? That's a headstone with his, or a footstone. And then there's two of them. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the earliest trammel burial out here. This child. Trammel. Mm -hmm. Daughter C.L. and Annie Trammel. She was 1871. So the Trammells were a big family too, right? They were, yes. And they, you know, they still exist here. So you asked me about a gate, and this one had one at one time, but it's, it's gone, which is interesting because it uh, has been stolen. It's interesting that the others, which are nicer, have not, which is uh, a good thing. This likely had the family's last name on it. And then see, we're just one big burial yeah. in there. Actually, if you'll hold this, oh, brave snake land. And it's almost like a gopher hole. I feel like a gopher tortoise hole right there. Mm. We don't have gopher tortoises here. I just wanted to feel around and see if there was a top of stone that there's not. That big old hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Living down in there, waiting on you. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video today, visiting the Copeland Cemetery again, but also the Perry Cemetery and kind of connecting the dots and uh, connecting these two cemeteries together. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on another Adventure into History.